Welcome to a new episode of Coach's Corner, this time Boys Basketball Edition. I'm Jake Lancer with Daniel Lynch for HWTV, and today we're joined once again by varsity head coach David Rubibo. The Wolverines are an impressive 10-0 as they get ready to take on Granada Hills Tuesday, December 13th. Coach, how was the team trip to Arizona? Great trip. Um, anytime you get the guys together for an extended period of time, uh, it's fun, uh, especially with how we kind of mix up roommates. Um, get a, Guys get a different opportunity to be with other guys and kind of get to know them, which is always great. Uh, as far as the game went, um, we played a good team who was really uh, organized and well coached. Um, but, you know, we, we were hoping for a little bit more of a competitive game given the nature of that event. Um, but it was a good event nonetheless, and we're, we're happy we got to participate. The team's clicking really nicely right now. How do you sort of ensure that that continues throughout the season? Well, you, you, um, you know, the scoreboard would indicate that we're clicking. We see a lot of. Uh, a lot of level of improvement for us, um, you know, just on the defensive end with assignments and little things like that. And then on the offensive end, just coordinating some timing, getting our, some chemistry back with guys being in and out, sick, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we're still hoping that a, a consistent set of practices coming up here will be uh, just what the doctor ordered heading into the Damien Classic and uh, League play. Awesome. I mean, still, you guys have had some great success this season, and it seems like you guys are the team to beat and have a target on your back. How do you just keep a high tempo with this slew of games that you have coming up? You know, um, having a bunch of guys returning plays a huge part in that. They understand um, what the expectations are. They understand uh, being the hunter and being the hunted. Um, They've experienced that from their sophomore year or freshman year uh, to where they are, to where they were last year and even this year. Um, so the expectation level is the same. We expect our guys to to compete and continue to get better. And then it's creating a level of an urgency and uh, intensity at practice that's really important. And I think, you know, our, our seniors and our juniors um, and really everybody across the board knows what it's going to take to do the things that we want to do. And, and that's kind of the 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 the, high, the prize in the sky, so to speak. Yeah, you just answered actually one of my questions. I was going to ask about this winter break and how during this time you can work on things and improve. And just if you have anything extra to add to that, what's something you want to focus on? Well, you know, with with the way high school basketball has kind of been structured now with not having to play in a, a four-game tournament given throughout the week, um, we found ourselves playing three-game weeks, two-game weeks, and having days in between to practice and things like that. And the benefit of that is, yes, you get to practice and prepare for everybody you play, the, the the hard the hard part of it is is that you're constantly playing two to three games every week and you know scheduling can be pretty tough traveling um, driving to Redondo Beach etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so getting cons- like four or five days of consistent practice where we just get to focus on us is is what we're I'm licking my chops for I can't wait um, to just get in the gym and have four or five days for us to work on us a little bit um, because when you're playing every other day or so you're spending a lot of your time preparing, too, for the team that you're going to play and, and then while trying to fix little things here and there. So uh, it's a balancing act. Against Long Beach, Jordan, Jacob Huggins had a great game, in my opinion, and also towards the end we saw some flashes of Don Benta. Do you think that there will be times during the season where, this, where we'll see them on the floor together? Well, yeah, we actually did it on Saturday. Um, we got off to a pretty slow start, and uh, at one point, I think in the first quarter, we had Jacob, Dom, Brady, Nick all in there together. Yep. Um, I can't remember who the fifth was, uh, Robert, or- Robert, or- Robert Christian Ori, excuse me, or, uh, Robert Hinton, um, maybe, but, um, it was a pretty big lineup yeah. and we're like, Hey, this is something we got to tinker with. Um, thing, everything's open. Uh, Dom didn't get to play as much cause he was sick the day before and didn't come to school. Um, but we anticipate Dom playing a, a part, um, a big part as Jacob's backup, um, and, you know, getting significant minutes. Cool. Yeah, speaking on uh, Don Bentho, let's just talk about some of your younger players. Can you just tell us a little bit more about them so we can just get to know them as players? Well, you know, if, if you start with the freshman, you have Amir Jones, who is a, a combo guard, um, really shoots the ball, great defender, um, someone we're incredibly excited about who, who's going to be really good. He's learning what varsity basketball is at the highest level in high school basketball. He's learning, like, how, how details and, and just all the little nuanced things that, that go into being uh, – competitive, being a winner, et cetera, et cetera, how they play a part in your success. Um, so we're really excited about him. Dom Bentho, um, really talented young guy, um, but just young. You know, he, he's he's learning what it means to play at this pace and speed and, and getting up and down and all the things that he can do, but he is incredibly talented and gifted um, and, and very versatile. People don't realize this, but he can really shoot the ball. 
So we're excited about that. And then obviously uh, from the underclassmen, Nick Jimenez, is kind of Jimenez, excuse me, is the last of the uh, underclassmen on the team. And obviously he is just um, continuing to evolve and grow and um, we're, we're incredibly excited. I think he's touching almost six, eight now. Um, <laughs> it's, it's pretty spectacular given I think he's grown a half inch in the last month and a half. So uh, we're hoping he continues to grow um, and we hope he continues to, to do the things that he's doing because he's uh, fun to have and fun to watch, and as are all three. Watching the team so far this season, one of the biggest things that's sort of spoken to me is the unselfishness. I feel like guys are always going to make that extra pass and setting their teammates up, and they sort of enjoy that more than them scoring themselves. Have you been preaching that during practice, and what does that really say about your guys? You know, a lot of what we do <clears throat> when we do drills, uh, we talk about one more. Um, so anytime a guy says one more, the ball's got to go to him. Um, it doesn't matter if, if you're wide open, someone yells wide, one more, you know, we, we trust. Um, obviously situational, like, hey, if Trent just knocked four in a row and Brady yells one more and Trent's wide open, well, okay, Trent gets that one, you know. Um, not that, just an example, not that Trent would do that, but, uh, um, you know, that that's kind of our mantra, um, one more. And, and, you know, it starts with Brady um, and Trent and, and Jacob. They're all so unselfish. Um, they're all great kids who, who just want to win, um, and, and that sets the tone for everybody else, and it makes it hard um, to be a, to be a, another guy on the court and, and not play that way. Um, you know, and even like Christian Ori is just an incredibly unselfish guy who, who knows how to play, and, you know, shoot, we'd, we wish he would take a few more shots when he has them um, but because he's a talented guy, and, and he just only helps our, 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 our depth and our versatility. Talking on like your practices and how high tempoed and how hard working these guys are, I just want to talk about them off the court and just how they are as people. So can you just speak on that? Uh, I mean, we, we have the greatest uh, young men in our program, and it's across the board from our freshmen to our our varsity. They're all uh, just great people, uh, fun to be around. They laugh, they joke, they make fun of each other. Um, they try and make fun of the coaches. It doesn't work really. Um, but we get, you know, we typically come out on top there. Um, but they're, they're just, it's just a great group. Um, you know, they enjoy each other. I mean, they're doing, uh, TikToks and, you know, Snapchats all day. And I'm just like, guys, get off your phone, you know? Um, but it's just fun to see the camaraderie, the smiles, the, the, the enjoyment. Um, we, we went to two games, um, at the footprint arena after our game on Saturday and a couple guys had seats behind us, the coaches. A couple guys were to the left. And next thing you know, all of them were just sitting together up the row because uh, they just want to be around each other. And it's 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 really cool. It's really fun to see. Um, it's been really enjoyable um, to have such high-character young men who work so hard, who care about each other, who care about our success, care about each other's success. It's a, it's a blessing in disguise. Looking at this Granada team, they like to slow the game down and sort of limit the amount of possessions that their opponent gets. While you guys are more of a fast-paced, up-tempo team, how are you going to try and sort of combat their approach? Um, you know, we're, we're going to be who we are. You know, we'll, we'll mix up our defenses a little bit and just kind of uh, try to get after them. But ma mainly what we're going to focus on is, is us and, you know, off makes or misses, pushing the ball and creating advantage opportunities um, with post-ups and mismatches and things like that, which we've done a much better job of this year. Um, Trent's done a great job getting the ball out and advancing it. And, um, you know, for us right now, it's still just about getting our timing down and getting figuring each other out. Um, you know, th two and a half weeks without Brady is, is significant. Like I said, Christian was sick. Dom was sick. Um, we've had guys out for various reasons. Um, so, Getting some more time together is, is critical um, as we approach this next set of games and, and, and next set of the next uh, portion of the season. Um, just to go off of that sort of gameplay wise, looking at that Long Beach game, I'm pretty sure you forced them to over 20 turnovers. I also was talking to Brady in his one on one interview a couple weeks ago, and he said that one of the main things that he focused on in the offseason was getting better at forcing turnovers. Is that sort of a theme for the team this season or something that you guys have been sort of trying to? improve on you know we, we uh obviously yes we we want to uh turn other teams over and 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 but we view that in a variety of ways if we're getting guys to take shots out of their offense if we're getting guys to take quick shots we view that as a turnover um and and those are things that that we look at um sometimes when we're pressing early on um it's to 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 up the up the tempo a little bit and also create a sense of urgency amongst our guys because um, I just think as as you allow teams to settle in, you know they get comfortable, and the last thing you want is uh, 
any quality team or player to be comfortable and, and you know, start making shots and doing the things that they want to do. So, yes, it is a priority. Um, it's something that we're trying to get uh, improve on and something we're getting better at. Again, this is just such a high-tempo, fast-paced, amazing team. I just want to ask, what are some challenges you see in the future for this team? You know, um, every game is a challenge. Um, every practice is a challenge because, um, you know, we, we've got to continue to grow, and that's hard. Um, looking at our record, looking at what we're holding de teams to defensively, looking at what we're scoring, you're probably like, okay, hey, we're, we're going to be all right. Just stay here. Um the reality is you're either getting better or you're not, and uh, we have to continue to get better and grow as a team, as a unit. Um, but we, we've set up some games. Um, obviously, the Damien Classic will be our – this week we have Granada Hills, and then we go to uh, Arkansas for two quality games against Whitney Young from Illinois and Bentonville West, who's a pretty good team out in Arkansas. Then we come back and we get those four days, uh, four or five days of practice before the Damien Classic, which is probably one of the premier events in the country for after Christmas tournaments. And we're playing four straight days. Um, so that'll be a, a challenge in itself before heading into league play. And even when we open up league play, um, we open up with Alamania at home. And then that next day we go and play Bishop Montgomery and Redondo, um, at Redondo Union High School. So, and as it stands right now, Bishop Montgomery is the number three team in the area. So um, we're, we're We've placed the schedule in a, in, a, in a position where we have to continue to grow and get better. Otherwise, um, we're going to find ourselves on the other side of the scoreboard that we don't want to be on. So um, that that is a priority. Getting better is a priority. But we also know our there's some quality opponents ahead. I mean, uh, in January, I think we have a week where we go to Notre Dame, host Sierra, and then we play Rancho Verde on the road, uh, who's very good. So um, a lot of basketball and a lot of quality basketball ahead, not to mention our league and – how good all those teams are. This team is also a team that could potentially win a championship, and I know that's one of the goals for this team. But on top of that, what are some other goals for the team? You know, <clears throat> every year we have some some staples. A, we want to be the best team, uh, regardless of the score. Like, we want to look like we care. We want to act like we care. We want to be about our teammates and be about all our, our success, right? Um, not individual success, but the team success. Then from there, it's, it becomes about league championships, um, open division championships, and state championships. Um, you know, it's, it's not a mystery. Um, that's, that's the goal, and that's what we're playing for, and that's what we're hopeful that we'll continue to strive for. Um, we were close last year. We shared the Mission League Championship, and then we got to the championship in the open, and then we got to the regional semis in the open. And so we've, we've taken steps in the right direction, but we need to continue to uh, – to grow as a unit and, and, and take the next step. Lastly, since we won't be able to chat with you until after winter break in January, you already mentioned how you travel to Arkansas and you have a couple big tournaments in that span. How crucial are these couple weeks going to be for the development of this team and what are you most looking forward to? It is critical. Um, I'm looking forward to, to the quality of opponents that we're going to play. I'm incredibly excited uh, to see our guys have to come back day after day and compete against some of the best teams around. Um, and, and the varying styles, right? Um, we're going to have to adjust in a short period of time to, you know, Whitney Young, who could play a fast-paced up-tempo, and Bentonville West, who may be a slow-it-down, run-their-offense type of team. So um, our ability to adjust to those things is going to only prepare us um, as the uh, the league season comes around. And, and obviously, you know, with our, with our January schedule being what it is, it's going to be pretty tough. And we're excited. Um, the Damien, I think, is going to provide that as well, um, which will be great for us. Thank you, Coach, so much for joining us today. Good luck to you guys. I'm Danny Lynch with Jake Lancer. We'll see you next time on Coach's Corner. Enjoy the game.